Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Ralph Rangnick has told the Manchester United hierarchy that Alan Wambasaka, Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw are not good enough to be playing for the club and need replacing. Luke Shaw, he's been poor in a lot of games this season and I'm shocked in that aspect because revert back to last season, Shaw was superb. Shaw didn't play any part in the 2-2 draw against Aston Villa last weekend because he was suspended. Luke Shaw had a couple of injuries earlier on this season. He is injury prone, which is a concern. Shaw's been a long-serving player at Manchester United. He's been at Manchester United for eight years. Aaron Wan-Bissaka. I think he's been poor in a lot of the games he's played in this season. Basaka, he's not our first choice right back under Rangnick. Diego Dalo is our first choice right back under Rangnick. Basaka is not available at the moment anyway because he's out with COVID. I think defensively, Basaka's good, but the attacking side of his game lets him down. This season has been Bissaka's third full season at Man United. Manchester United got Aaron Wan Bissaka from Crystal Palace back in the summer of 2019. Got him for £50 million. And Harry Maguire, he's not good enough to represent the club. Manchester United need to sell him this year. Maguire's been terrible this season. Um, just come back from injury not so long ago. The last game Maguire played was the 3-1 win against Burnley. That was the final game of last year. Earlier on this season, Maguire had a calf injury. And towards the end of last season, he had ligament damage in his ankle. The other week, though, Harry Maguire spoke out and he admitted that he's sick of Manchester United's poor form under Rangnick. And he said that the Manchester United players are letting the fans down. And Maguire also said that Rangnick is not all to blame for the poor performances. Got to agree with what he said on that aspect. Harry Maguire certainly wasn't worth the £80 million that Manchester United paid for him. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing at the club behind Pogba. Now, like I updated you on my last video, Ralph Rangnick reveals Manchester United's new formation. It's the 4-3-3 formation. Manchester United played the 4-3-3 against Aston Villa. So, reflecting on that, Rangnick has decided to scrap the 4 triple two formation because quite clearly that formation hasn't been working so hopefully this 4-3-3 formation suits our standards. Ralph Rangnick has been Manchester United's interim manager <coughs> for six weeks now. He's lost one game so far as Manchester United manager Manchester United lost to Wolves earlier on this season 1-0. That was the first time Wolves won at Old Trafford since 1980. So Rangnick is Manchester United's interim manager until the end of the season. Then it did initially say that he will continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. 
But if Man United don't finish in the top four, Rangnick won't get the consultancy role. Rangnick won't get the Man United job on a permanent basis, I can assure that. Uh, there's been some good performances under Rangnick. There's also been some poor performances as well. Earlier on this season, there was reports saying that Ralph Rangnick is already losing the dressing room at Manchester United. And it mentioned that 17 Manchester United players are unhappy and he's already under pressure. But despite that, Rangnick did get told that transfer funds are available for him this month so reflecting on that Rangnick will be backed by the Glazers before Manchester United he was the head of sports and development at Lokomotiv Moscow earlier on this season Rangnick recommended Ewan Sharpin as an assistant coach and analyst he also recommended Chris Armisen as an assistant coach and he also recommended Saz Chalenzin as a sports psychologist. Manchester United could yet appoint their new manager this season. Manchester United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson retired, you know, Manchester United have sacked four permanent managers since Ferguson retired. We sacked David Moyes after 10 months. Manchester United finished seventh under the David Moyes era. I think that's the lowest we finished in the Premier League era. Then Manchester United sacked Louis van Gaal after two years. We won the FA Cup under him. Then Manchester United sacked Jose Mourinho after two and a half years. Mourinho enjoyed one good season at Man United because he won three trophies in his first season. The three trophies he won was the Europa League, the EFL Cup and the Community Shield. But the reasons it didn't work out under him is because he had bad disputes with the board, because the board didn't recommend the players he wanted to get in and he had bad disputes with the top players. And last year... Manchester United sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after almost three years in charge. Solskjaer's final game as Manchester United manager was the 4-1 defeat to Watford. When Solskjaer officially got sacked, if you do remember rightly, he gave a farewell interview and he got emotional in that farewell interview, which of course was understandable because Solskjaer adores the club. And Solskjaer is a legend of the club and he always will be a legend of the club. Like I just said, uh, Solskjaer was in charge of Man United for almost three years. And he played for Manchester United for 11 years. Solskjaer had the proven pedigree when he was a United player because he won a lot of trophies. His most iconic moment as a player was when he scored the winning goal in the Champions League final at the Nou Camp back in 1999. You know, Solskjaer won the club at the treble and that is the club's greatest achievement. But Solskjaer had no proven pedigree as a manager, did he? You know, the clubs he's managed so far in his managerial career obviously managed Manchester United's reserves. He watched some of the team grow and develop. He managed Cardiff. His record at Cardiff was terrible. The reason he got sacked from Cardiff is because he got them relegated. He had two spells at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles and that with them, but they're not a big club and obviously managed Manchester United's senior squad. But reflecting now on Solskjaer, was United manager for, um, he did gain some experience. You know, I don't think Manchester United really wanted to sack Solskjaer, but in the end they had no choice but to sack him because revert back to the last few months of Solskjaer's managerial tenure, you know, the performances were bad and the results were bad to go with the performances. But reflecting on that, not all of the blame stemmed from Solskjaer. You know, there was also players that had to take responsibility as well. Manchester United paid off Solskjaer around seven and a half million because revert back to last summer he signed a three year contract. Manchester United should have never give him 
that contract because we knew for a long time that he wasn't the long term manager for Man United. You know, Solskjaer did not win a trophy when he was Man United manager. And I said he wasn't capable of winning trophies as a manager. Manchester United have not won a trophy since 2017. That's five years ago now. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. I did say, though, at the start of this season when Solskjaer was United manager, that this season was always going to be big for him. And obviously the pressure was on him at the start of this season because revert back to last summer, Manchester United enjoyed a very good summer transfer window. We made four signings. You know, three of the four signings were major signings. Must have spent around one hundred and forty one million last summer. The expectations were far too high for Solskjaer to exceed. As Man United manager, and he was basically in a position that he shouldn't have been in. You know, last summer when Solskjaer was United manager, he received very good backing from the board. You know, the Glazers backed him. The Glazers have been at Manchester United for around 16 and a half years now. Revert back to April last year, a lot of Manchester United fans protested against the Glazers, you know, the Carrington training ground and at Old Trafford. Because obviously the Glazers were planning to scrap the Champions League for that European Super League. The Glazers bought Manchester United for £500 million back in 2005. Last summer, Ed Woodward uh, backed Solskjaer. Uh, Ed Woodward, of course, is leaving Manchester United. At the end of this month, Ed Woodward's had like a 17-year association with the club. Richard Arnold will become Manchester United's chief executive on the 1st of February to replace Ed Woodward. And John Mertiff and Darren Fletcher also backed Ole. You know, Solskjaer did get appointed in as the interim manager back in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. He was the interim manager in his first three months. He did well as the interim manager, so the club decided to give him the job on a permanent basis back in March 2019. Uh, when Solskjaer was Manchester United manager, he signed around 14 players. Um, Man United spent over what four hundred million under Solskjaer. Um, on the other side of things, when Solskjaer was United manager, he also got rid of a lot of players, didn't he? Uh, the players he got rid of permanently. Um, obviously, he released Sergio Romero, and I think he released Joe Pereira. Solskjaer offloaded players like Ashley Young, Valencia, Smalling. Damian let Fellaini go back in January 2019. He offloaded Angel Gomez, um, offloaded Ander Herrera, offloaded Lukaku, also offloaded Alexis Sanchez. You know, he offloaded Daniel James. He also let Odi Nagalo go. So there are a lot of the players he got rid of permanently. Uh, I can remember a few of the players he loaned out. Uh, Molly loaned Brandon Williams out. He loaned Ethan Laird out. He loaned Andres Pereira out as well. Facundo Palistri also loaned him out. In his first full season, he got Manchester United to three semi-finals and he got us a third place finish. In his second full season, got us to the Carabao Cup. semi-final then he got us to the quarter-finals of the FA Cup um, got us to the Europa League final that was his first major final when he was Man United manager but unfortunately he didn't win it and last season he got us a second place finish don't forget when Man United had Solskjaer Man United went 29 games unbeaten away from home in the Premier League and I like the way Solskjaer develops the youth when he was Man United manager. But uh, Manchester United have not been the same team since Ferguson retired. 
and we've got to accept that no one's going to replicate what Ferguson did. You know, Alex Ferguson, greatest manager of all time. Uh, Alex Ferguson brought success to Manchester United. He won 30-odd trophies, including 13 Premier League titles. But there again, Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at Man United. Um, Alex Ferguson was at Manchester United for, what, 26 years? So reflecting on that, he was a long-serving manager. Man United must have spent over £1 billion since Ferguson retired. And we must have brought over 40 players in since Ferguson retired. And obviously Rangnick's now inheriting players who other managers have brought in. None of this squad is Rangnick's, let me put that into the equation. Now, um, on my last video, I gave you the news on Paul Pogba. Now, Paul Pogba has told Manchester United he wants to join Real Madrid in the summer. There again, PSG is the most likely destination for Pogba. Uh, Paul Pogba has been in talks with PSG. Pogba's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Revert back to last month, the Sun said that Manchester United offered Paul Pogba a new £500,000 a week contract that would have made him the highest paid player in Premier League history, but Paul Pogba denied being offered that contract. Uh, we've had some positive news regarding Pogba recently. No, Pogba is set to return to action after the international break. Rangnick confirmed Pogba recently returned to training. Um, he has been out with a hip injury. You know, this season is Pogba's sixth season at Man United since he rejoined. Pogba has played 212 games and he's scored 38 goals. He's won three trophies at the club so far. And Pogba's our most expensive sign at the moment because Manchester United paid £89 million for him. Uh, quite a lot of players, I think, are going to depart the club this year. Uh, Jesse Lingard looks like he's going to be departing the club. Uh, there's a good chance that Lingard is going to Newcastle. It's said that Newcastle have made a fresh approach to sign Jesse Lingard. Lingard may as well leave because he doesn't get in Manchester United's team anyway. Lingard's out of contract in the summer. Donny van der Beek, you know, do you think he could still leave in this January transfer window? Well, he needs to leave, does Donny van der Beek, because one, he doesn't get enough opportunities, and two, Pogba is returning. He said earlier on this season that van der Beek's not allowed to leave Manchester United this month. Earlier on in the season, he had a bust up with his agent. Uh, van der Beek recently rejected Newcastle. I'm hearing Everton still want van der Beek. Van der Beek should have gone to Everton last summer. Van der Beek has been at Manchester United for over a year and a half. He's only scored two goals for the club. Manchester United got him for £40 million with add-ons included. He's got a contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Anthony Martial, you know the news on him. It said yesterday that Juventus are interested in taking Anthony Martial on loan. Man United are asking for up to £6 million 
in loan fees. I think a meeting's going to take place between Juventus and Manchester United next week. Martial recently rejected loan offers from Tottenham and Newcastle. Uh, Martial wants to move abroad. Barcelona, Juventus and Sevilla are all linked. Fabrizio Romano said that Martial is not interested in going to a Premier League club, but he still wants to leave Man United in this January transfer window. In a Ralph Rangnick's press conference ahead of the game against Brentford, Uh, Rangnick said that the Martial matter has been resolved because after the 2-2 draw against Aston Villa, Rangnick said that Martial refused to play against Villa but Martial come out and denied claims that he refused to play against Aston Villa. Last year, Rangnick confirmed that Martial wants to leave Manchester United. And last year, Martial's agent confirmed that Martial wants to leave Man United in this January transfer window. Martial has just come back from a knee injury. He's demanding more game time. He's been at Manchester United for seven years as Martial. He's got a contract with Man United till 2024. Martial scored 79 goals in 268 games in all competitions. Manchester United paid the initial fee of £36 million for Martial from Monaco back in 2015. The best season Martial enjoyed at Man United was his debut season under Louis van Gaal. Edison Cavani, he will be leaving Manchester United in the summer because earlier on this season, Rangnick revealed that Edison Cavani wants to stay at Manchester United till the end of the season. Uh, Juan Mata, he's leaving Manchester United as well because it recently said that Juan Mata is refusing to sign a new contract ahead of a proposed move to La Liga. Apparently, Juan Mata's father and agent had a meeting with Real Sociedad, Matter's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Matter lost his place in our team a while ago. Um, Ahmad Diallo's going out on loan. Uh, Man United will be offloading Matic this, Matic this year. Pogba will probably be leaving in the summer. Unless we can offload him in this January transfer window. Tell us, you know, he could go this year. I'm hearing that Barcelona are interested in him. Phil Jones and Bailly, there's a good chance they'll be leaving this year. Diego Delo could leave this year. Manchester United looking to get rid of Dean Henderson permanently. So there you go. Manchester United do play Brentford tonight, as you all know. It's at 8 o'clock kickoff. It's at the Brentford Community Stadium. Uh... The game obviously got rearranged because Man United were supposed to be playing Brentford on Tuesday the 14th of December last year but got postponed because Man United were hit with a Covid outbreak. Manchester United must beat Brentford tonight. You know, Manchester United are coming into the game on the back of a 2-2 draw against Aston Villa. Man United threw away a two-goal lead against Aston Villa. Uh, Man United have got some players missing, but not many. Uh, Lingard, I think, recently picked up a knock that he doesn't really get in the team. Pop is still out, but like I said, close to returning. Uh, Rashford was out of a leg injury, I think he's back now. Uh, yeah, Ronaldo, he's just come back from a hip injury. He was missing his knot now. 
Eric Bai, he's not available at the moment because he's at the African Cup of Nations and Anwan Basaka is not available because he's out with COVID. Brentford, they haven't done well recently. Uh, they've lost the last two games in the league. They lost to Liverpool last weekend, 3-0. Uh, the Brentford manager is Thomas Frank. He's been Brentford manager for over three years now. His contract at Brentford expires next year. Before he was the manager of Brentford, he was the Brentford assistant. Before then, he managed Bromby. And before then, he managed Denmark's under-16s, under-17s and under-19s. Uh, this season has been Brentford's first ever season in the Premier League. Prior to this season, the last time Brentford were in the top flight was back in 1947. That's over 70 years ago now. Uh, Brentford have got some players missing. Uh, Charlie Good is out with injury. Uh, David Raya is out with injury. He's one of Brentford's goalkeepers. Joshua De Silva, he's out with injury. Uh, Frank Onyeka is not available for Brentford at the moment because he's at the he's on international duty. Zanka, he's not available at the moment for Brentford because he's also out with injury. So, there you go. And I think they've got some other injuries as well. The best player that Brentford have got is Ivan Toney. Ivan Toney had COVID earlier on this season. I think Sergi Canoz is also a good player for Brentford as well. He's a midfielder. Um... They've got Tariki Fosu as well. Um, he's been out with injury. They have Max Hagarth. They've got Marcus Fors, another attacking player. They have Brian M. Bumo. That's good. You know, they've got Shandon Baptiste. They've got Finn Stevens, Christian Norgard, Joe Valencia, Pontus Janssen. You know, he's a former Leeds United player. I think Janssen is a defender. They've got Rico Henry. Rico Henry's just come back from injury not so long ago. So there you go. They are quite a few of the players Brentford have. Let me put into the equation they lost Dolly Watkins and they also lost Ben Rama. You know, Manchester United play West Ham at the weekend and that's going to be a difficult game so anyway guys that's everything to update you with drop your comments likes below on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always and take care god bless see you all again very soon